Hi, this is Herb Shapiro of the Dr. Vax channel, and it is quite a mess here. Uh, you probably hear a printer going in the background. There's stuff all over the place. What's going on? Well, what's going on is I've just had two really bad 3D printing days where everything seemed to go wrong. I'd like to tell you about some of the things I learned, share with you some of the videos I'll be preparing with all of this stuff, so stay tuned and let's learn something together. My two days of challenges started with what I thought was going to be very simple. I have a brand new Olsen Ruby. Actually, it's not so new. It's been sitting on the shelf for a couple of months. But at the Midwest RepRAF uh, conference that I was just at in Indiana, um, I met the Olsen Ruby, pe Ruby people, and they gave me a new torque wrench that they're going to be selling. I thought, perfect time to install the Olsen Ruby. So I started shooting a video, and you'll see the video in the next few days, with my Olsen Ruby. I got it installed, didn't seem too hard to do, and um, then I made my first prints. And they were ugly. This, uh, I used Marvin as my sample print because it's nice and small, prints fast. Uh, this one, the layers shifted, the head popped off. Um, I have a whole series of them. There's tiny, so they're hard to hold on to. Here with notes about what I tried. None of them were very good. In fact, most of them were pretty darn bad. So I put my brass nozzle back in. Now, every time you switch the nozzle, you have to re-level the bed. And on the Prusa, when I was doing this on a Prusa i3 MK3, you go through a full XYZ calibration. Um, so I recalibrated again and printed with the brass nozzle, adjusted some more parameters, and it wasn't bad. Matter of fact, this was the brass nozzle. So I'm thinking, what's going on here? And then I remember. When I first put the Ruby nozzle in, I didn't run a calibration. And I went to print, and I was, oops, wait, stop. I stopped the print right away. I went and started an XYZ calibration, and I walked away. Mistake. They tell you to put a sheet of paper to watch it. If it hits the sheet of paper, the paper gets stuck. You need to stop it immediately. I walked away. I came back, and my brand new Ruby nozzle, they're about 100 bucks, was grinding on the print bed. Matter of fact, in the rightmost corner, it ground off some of the black paint, and there's sort of like uh, brass underneath. I'm thinking, it's a ruby. Shouldn't be a problem. Very hard. So I readjusted my proximity sensor. The proximity sensor was too high. And I went and I recalibrated again. Everything seemed fine. But my Marvins came out terrible. Just terrible. So I checked it with a brass nozzle over again. It was better. I ordered for next day delivery at my own expense a new Ruby nozzle. I figured I damaged it. I took the old one out. I looked at it under a magnifying glass. It didn't look damaged, you know, but what can I tell? I put the new one in and it was better. It wasn't bad, but not as good as I was getting originally off my brass nozzle, and in fact, the new ones on, with the brass nozzle, nozzle weren't great either. So I thought I'd print some calibration cats, because those are what I've used all along, and they just weren't quite as good. Um, there, It looked like it was under extruding just a little bit between the layers. So I followed all the instructions I found on the web. I upped the temperature. I played with extrusion. I printed a bigger Marvin. Not bad, but not great. Not what I expected. So I went to Google. And I started Googling and looking. And then I started thinking, what else had I changed? Well, I also changed the print sheet, the actual spring steel sheet. I changed it for a powder-coated sheet I had purchased from Matter Hackers, 
By the way, that's excellent product. It's a really nice product and they're available. You can get them right away. Um, so, but the XYZ calibration should have adjusted for that. What else had I changed? Well, I had upgraded the firmware on my Prusa. But I'm thinking, do I have to roll back the Prusa firmware? I had upgraded so I could use a seven by seven board leveling matrix. So I set it back to three by three, no different. So I thought I'd try one more print and I went to print a vase. Now this vase actually came out perfect, but this is after I found the problem. When I was printing the vase, as soon as it started going into vase mode, it would go a third of a turn and then the print head would jump to the center. Third of a turn, print head would jump to the center. Now on the Ruby nozzle, the nozzle cools off much faster, which is why you have to run it a little bit hotter. That cooling was messing up the adhesion of the filament as it was going around the vase. So back to Google, I'm checking on the firmware, I'm checking everything I can find. Somehow or another, I came across the fact that if you use the Octolapse plugin for Octoprint, and I print everything of Octoprint, that it can cause problems in vase mode if you don't have it set up perfectly. Now, Octolapse is that wonderful software when you see a time lapse and you don't see the print head at all, you just see it growing. Those are all done with Octolapse. So I uninstalled Octolapse. A matter of fact, I don't think I'm gonna use it right now because I now realize it injects G code into your print stream. That's not something I wanna mess with if I'm looking for quality first. I'd rather find a better way to get good time lapses. I uninstalled Optilask, and the next thing I printed was this vase. And it came out perfect, beautiful. Uh, no under extrusion at all. It's at least as good as I normally get on a brass nozzle. So I'm printing another Marvin now. That was two days of messing around. Now in between, I started some other projects because I, I really am committed to publishing two to three videos a week. So I started a project for how to make stamps and stencils with your children or grandchildren for the holiday. We're gonna do frogs, we're gonna do bunnies, we're gonna do butterflies. Even that caused me some difficulty. Uh, first, I found that um, you need to have the stencil very thin and you need the openings to be relatively wide. I tried doing it in PLA, it didn't pick up enough ink. Then I decided I have to use Flex. Well, the printer I normally print TPU in is my Prusa. That was busy trying to get the Ruby nozzle working. So I said, you know what? I wonder if this Mini Select can print Flex TPU. And the Mini Select version ones had trouble. The version two were a little better, but people were modifying the extruder to make it work. But I looked at the pictures on the web of the extruder and my extruder looked different. So it seems like I have a V2 prime because my extruder does not have a gap when it's feeding the filament. And in fact, now I printed this very high, at a very high temperature um, to make extrusion easy, but in fact, this printed perfectly. So you're going to be seeing another video, uh, one on the Ruby nozzle with a variety of materials, and you can see the stack of filament I'm going to be trying it with behind me, another on stamps and other things you can make if you're kids. Um, let me tell you the other disaster I had. See the sink pad? It says washable, lie. I don't know what it's washable with, but I needed to use that goop off stuff to get this ink off my hands. Not something I want to use with children. I did order another one from Melissa, Melissa and Doug. These are water soluble. So a bunch of new videos are coming up. The lesson for today is change one thing at a time. I changed the print surface. I changed the nozzle. I had put a new plug-in in Octoprint. I had changed my firmware. And because I changed so many things at the same time, it was impossible to determine what was causing Marvin to fail so dramatically. I seem to have lost the Marvin who lost his head. Oh, here we go. This Marvin to fail so dramatically. 
So change one thing at a time, and that's the best way to proceed when making enhancement to your printing environment. Okay, I hope you learned something from all of my mistakes. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. All of the videos from all this stuff, plus another video I'm doing some programming work uh, to build a customized version of a Raspberry Pi that you can use to front end a series of printers using the Matter Control software. We're gonna have a lot of fun over the next couple of weeks and months. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Thanks, and let's continue to learn things together. <music>